Right now, after more than 30 years, a person found dead in a Madison chimney is identified. Who that person is and what's next in the investigation. Also, the United Methodist Church relaxing a ban on allowing LGBTQ people into the clergy, what one pastor is saying about it. And later, a Verona woman getting overcharged by an insurance company over a system error. How our call for action team stepped into help. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. New today, after nearly 35 years, we're learning the name of a victim of a Madison mystery that has gone unsolved since way back in 1989, when a man's skeleton was found in a local chimney of all places. Our Maddie Heimsch is here with what we know today. Maddie? Eric, this is a case we've been covering right here on News 3 Now for decades. Take a look at how it all unfolded today. Still, after all these years, the case detective okay. waits for the call. That one tip that could help solve the mysterious and intriguing murder. That tip didn't come in the form of a call after all, but instead in the form of modern DNA technology. Inconceivable when we reported on Chimney Doe back in 1997. But when one Madison detective handed the case over to the DNA Doe Project in 2019, it was only a matter of time before detectives were able to extract DNA from hair found in the chimney and use investigative genealogy to match it with Ronnie J. Kirk. We, we use DNA evidence a lot, and as things are, are getting more and more advanced, it does help kind of paint the picture for our detectives. That picture is one we're seeing for the first time today. Kirk previously represented by a reconstructed bust made from the shape of his skull. This identification is just the first major step in the investigation. Now we start the process of trying to figure out who Ronnie was and how he ended up in Madison. Kirk's skeleton was found in that chimney by the owner of Good and Loud Music Store. Alongside a paisley dress, a shag sweater, an iron cross necklace, and pointed shoes. The clothing led to several theories about the man's identity, none of which have been clarified. He was married twice, and he was divorced twice, and he had children. So how he identified, um, I do not know. We also know that Kirk was born in 1942 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he was adopted and raised by family. Investigators still don't know why Kirk was in Madison, why he would have been killed, or even who the perpetrator was. The Madison Police Department is asking anyone who has information about Ronnie J. Kirk to reach out with tips. We have that contact information up right now on channel3000.com. Maddie, thank you. A Madison man is in jail after an incident on Library Mall over the weekend. UW Police were called to that area on Saturday just after 7 for a report of a battery. A victim told investigators a man physically assaulted a speaker during a peaceful demonstration. The suspect reportedly was yelling at the group before punching one person in the back of the head, then struck another in the face. Both victims declined medical treatment. The suspect faces tentative charges of battery and disorderly conduct. That individual is not affiliated with UW-Madison. Moving to weather now, where once again wildfires in Canada are having an impact on our air quality here. Right now, Dane County is under an air quality alert until midnight. Monica Turner, a professor of biology and ecology at UW-Madison, says the fires impacting Wisconsin to this extent is a relatively new phenomena. The new found intensity of them is the reason for it impacting places beyond our northern border. Well, those geomagnetic storms Friday and Saturday that brought those dazzling colors to the night sky did cause some issues. The New York Times is reporting navigational systems in farming equipment broke down over the weekend. That equipment, including tractors, used GPS to plant precise rows to avoid gaps and overlap. Landmark Implement, a John Deere dealer in the Midwest, warned farmers about the potential disruptions. It's bad timing as it's the height of planting season in the Midwest and also in Canada. Rainy start to the week. Let's check your first one forecast. Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington is out on the weather patio. Alex? Hey, good evening there, Eric and everybody. It is actually pretty nice out here in the patio in the WIC TV studios. The sun's trying to make its appearance out here as well, so that's a plus. Temperatures are pretty nice out here as well. But first, the air quality advisor that Eric was mentioned before, Madison, and points off towards the north and west until 12 o'clock. And again, that's for that wildfire smoke that's making its way southeast all the way from Canada all the way down to southern Wisconsin. And as I look at my wildfire smoke model, I wouldn't be surprised to see this pop back up again periodically over the next couple of days. Radar 3000, nothing on Radar 3000 here in Dane County. It's high and dry, though there are some showers and thunderstorms down towards Walworth, down towards the Wisconsin-Illinois border, and that's where their shower and thunderstorm activity will be concentrated south and east of Janesville and Beloit for the rest of the night. Future track model showing here as we move on beyond the 6 o'clock uh, time frame, 
just an isolated shower storm chance north and west of Beloit and Janesville. One tries to pop up in Iowa County. If that even occurs, most of the area will be dry tonight with temperatures slowly working their way down into the 40s where we where we didn't have any rain and we had some sunshine 74 in Camp Douglas right now. Madison and it's 67 degrees 68 to the south of Monroe. So you could see where the showers and clouds were and where you see the oranges. That's where they had a little bit more in the way of sunshine. Coming up in Maine weather though, we're going to track temperatures eclipsing the 80 degree mark again. When you can expect that, I have the answer in a couple of moments. All right, Alex, thank you. Earlier this month, a long-standing ban on allowing LGBTQ clergy into the United Methodist Church was overturned. Now, in the week since, our Kyle Pazorski dug into that decision, speaking with a Madison pastor about the change. This month's decision was a big one by the United Methodist Church and came with great praise by members of Bethany here on Mineral Point Road. During the general conference, the vote came down 692 to 51, a resounding 93% in favor of removing the long-standing ban. Pastor Julie Wilson telling me Monday a feeling of uncertainty surrounded her members in anticipation for this vote. I think we had a lot of members who were waiting and said, you know, if this didn't pass, I don't know if they would have come back. Um, and I've had people like in the community reach out to me and, um, you know, just th thrilled that, that we did this. Many believe the vote was so lopsided due to the departure of many conservative congregations in recent years. Wilson saying the general conference was one of working together to move forward on a new path accepting all. In Madison, Kyle Pazorski, News 3 Now. Kyle, thank you. Pastor Wilson went on to tell him she's always felt everyone is invited into the church and that Bethany continues to be a place for LGBTQ members to freely worship. Well, at the state capitol today, the Wisconsin Supreme Court is considering whether or not to overturn a controversial law that bans ballot drop boxes in Wisconsin. That decision handed down from the court. That was back in July of 2022. At that time, of course, the court had a conservative majority. Now the liberal majority court is asking if they simply made the wrong choice back then. What if we just got it wrong? What if we made a mistake? Are we now supposed to just perpetuate that mistake into the future? Attorneys on the Republican-backed side of the court argue a repeal of the original rule will set a precedent of the court flip-flopping on positions every time a majority of the court changes, but Democrats believe the court was wrong and should overturn the previous ruling. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris returning to Wisconsin this week. She'll be visiting Milwaukee. That's a campaign stop there, part of her economic opportunity tour. This marks her fourth visit this year already, her eighth visit since she took office. Last month, she visited La Crosse. In March, she was here in Madison. And in January, she kicked off the Fight for Reproductive Freedoms Tour with a speech in Waukesha County. Happening today, East Doty and West Wilson streets are closed. MG&E is out doing work in preparation of the Doty and Wilson Street reconstruction project. Doty will be limited to one travel lane until August 16th. Drivers will be limited to one eastbound lane from MLK Junior Boulevard to King Street until then. Well, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is voting in favor of a new rule that's expected to bring significant reforms to the nation's electrical grid. This new rule aims to make it easier to build regional electrical transmission, high voltage electrical towers to deliver more electricity and clean energy to the grid. The chair of the three member group says that without this sort of action, the nation would not be able to handle increased demand and also extreme weather. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. We'll tell you about a local film festival, festival looking to spread the word. Plus, cancer can take a toll on the body, including some areas that most people don't like to talk about. How a program at UW Health is reaching out to support those impacted. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Brought to you by Ruber Law Offices. After a serious truck crash, you need a team who knows how to handle trucking cases and gets results. You need Gruber Law Offices. There's never a fee until we win. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Owning my own home is nice when you just come home knowing that it's yours. It's a sense of pride, sense of ownership, and enjoying it with everyone I love and care for. Make a lasting impact on local families in need. Please donate today. 
Steinhoffel's Memorial Day preview sale starts now. Save big throughout the store and get hundreds of amazing bonus buys, like this dining table, now $3.99, a Queen Beautyrest mattress, $3.99, or this sofa, bonus buy priced at only $4.99, a Queen bed, also $4.99. Get all this and more for low monthly payments when you take advantage of Steinhoffel's 60-month financing. The Memorial Day preview sale, only at Steinhoffel's and Steinhoffel's.com. It's Empire Today's biggest sale. The 50-50-50 sale. 50% off carpet and flooring, 50% off padding and materials, and 50% off installation. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today, get an 11% rebate on new roofing and gutters at Menards. Owens Corning shingles have a limited lifetime warranty and a 130 miles per hour wind warranty. Get an 11% rebate on all Owens Corning shingles. Complete your roofing project with new aluminum gutters. They're essential for protecting your foundation and help keep your basement dry. Available in three stock colors for only $10.99 each after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Been scammed? Landlord not responding? Have billing disputes? Take action. Thursday from 4 to 6.30 p.m., call 608-270-2833 and News 3 Now's Call for Action investigators will help you get results. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. May is Mental Health Awareness Month and a film festival in Madison is trying to spread the word the only way it can. The Mental Health Warrior Film Festival is happening this weekend at Flick's Brew House on the east side. The festival celebrates mental health warriors who are defined as creatives who have been touched by mental illness. And the man behind it all is one such warrior. I've struggled with severe anxiety and depression most of my life. And uh, creativity, uh, I've also been a, a writer most of my life. And I believe that one of the powers, one of the strengths, one of the tools of battling mental illness is creativity. The festival is this Saturday. All proceeds are going toward Camp Creatability and the Rogers Behavioral Health Foundation. UW Health wants to raise awareness about a recent message cancer leaders are sharing specifically about women's cancers. It's in honor of National Women's Health Week. Approximately 64% of women's cancers involve reproductive organs. The Women's Integrative Sexual Health or WISH program at UW Health is the only program in Wisconsin providing clinical consultation, resources, education, emotional support, and appropriate referral related to sexual health concerns for women with cancer. It can be a very difficult topic to talk about. It can be hard for patients to bring this topic up. It can be uncomfortable for providers, you know, to talk about this topic as well. But, you know, care teams are there to help. And I think we're, we're lucky in our system that we've got a great resource with our WISH clinic. Um, but whether that exists in your healthcare system or not, you know, providers want to help. And the first step to that is a conversation about the problem. Some common cancer care side effects include early menopause, infertility, and issues related to sexual health, such as pain or negative body image. When we come back, as severe weather continues across the country, how you can financially prepare for the worst. Plus, call for action, taking action. Hear from one woman on her struggles with an insurance company overcharging her. And how's the weather looking for the rest of the week? Alex returns his complete forecast after a short break. Pretty with spring savings at the Century House. Get $200 off all stressless recliners and ottomans, classic power base recliners, home office chairs, and each seat of a stressless sofa, love seat, or sectional. Plus, get 10% off the new stressless sky mattress and $50 off each stressless laurel or mint dining chair. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. Are record energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes? With inflation rising at record levels and incomes not keeping pace, you might be one of tens of thousands of Wisconsin residents who are struggling to survive in the blistering heat of summer or the bitter cold of winter. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today and call 
800-506-5596. That's 800-506-5596. Or visit www.kwwf.org. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. When it's time to get out and cultivate your ideal yard, we get you the right products at the right prices. Right now, rewards members get a free $10 gift card with a $100 estate fertilizer purchase, like estate weed and feed, $34.99. All Cub Cadet riding mowers are on sale, up to $900 off. Plus, leave the heavy lifting to us. Buy online and pick up your items in our convenient drive through in just one hour, only at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Your total experience is at the island. Tonight, News Tree Now's Call for Action team is taking action against an insurance company overcharging at least one woman due to a system error. She tried for months to get someone to fix her issues, and when she couldn't, we stepped in. Catherine Merck met the customer in Verona to see what happened. If I can't fix this for myself and for my family, there has to be others that are having the same issue. I spoke to Meredith Christensen nearly four months into her back and forth battle over insurance payments. This came after Dean Health merged with Medica back in January. I realized that our accounts weren't totaling and that our out of payment, you know, pharmacy expenses weren't being added into our out of pocket costs. She pays for her insurance this way because she's self employed. The price tag that came with the merger was way more than most people would be comfortable with. Out of pocket expenses have been $15,000. We have spent that much in health insurance just out of pocket with a $9,000 maximum. That's a lot of money to have just out of the blue that you're not budgeting for. You know what your out of pocket maximum is, but to exceed it by that much, that's a, that's a huge expense. She says the company gave her this letter recognizing the issue and said they would be working to proactively fix it without answers. Since then I've reached out 20 different times to try and resolve this problem. Um, and it is still not resolved. When nothing seemed to work, she turned to our call for action team. If this is an issue that's impacting me, it's an issue that's impacting other people. I got this statement from Medica. A spokesperson told me they identified an issue earlier this year that impacted the accuracy of the information online for copays and deductibles. When I asked how many people were impacted and wanted an exact number, they told me it was less than a thousand customers. They apologized for the issue and said they're still processing claims. And when the insurance company knows that they have a system error, their responsibility is to take care of that in a way that doesn't impact negatively the, the small fish in this pond here. And that's what they're doing. As of this week, Meredith still hasn't gotten this fixed. She hopes by speaking to us about the issue, other customers can put an end to their months-long frustrations. The urgency maybe isn't there as significantly as it is for me, um, and it hasn't really gone anywhere. The spokesperson with Medica said if members have questions, they can reach out to their customer care center by calling the number on their member ID card. Meredith says if she had any advice for people in this situation, she would tell people to hold on to all documents from the insurance provider to make sure claims can hold up to these larger companies. Moving forward with this call for action, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. We'll have stories all week, call for action stories leading up to News Renown's call for action telethon on Thursday. Our volunteers will be on standby to take your calls and get your stories out there. Make sure to tune in Thursday to watch it all happen. It'll be from 4 p.m. to 6.30. few showers today, brief cool down tomorrow. Alex now with his complete forecast. Eric, I actually want to start off, and you got that all right there, too, but uh, with our Queen Bee Radio Skycam. Look at this in Platteville. Look near the ground. There's some haze in back in the horizon there. Why do we have that haze? Well, we have PM 2.5 particulate matter from wildfire smoke, and that's occurring over portions of Grant County, and that's likely why we're seeing a bit of that haze near the ground. Areas from Madison, Platteville, Mineral Point to the north and west under that air quality advisor, air quality alert for susceptible folks who asthma and any 
other line, underlying conditions. You might want to just take it easy being outside with this amount of PM 2.5 in the atmosphere. And it's all from the wildfire smoke thousands and thousands of miles away. Well, I shouldn't say that far away, but it's up in Canada and it's made it all the way down here to southern Wisconsin. Radar 3000, high and dry here at this point in time. If you sneak off towards the south and towards the east, uh, down towards Walworth, uh, south of Elkhorn, over towards the Wisconsin-Illinois border, pretty persistent area of showers. And some of these showers have been producing rainfall rates of well over an inch over the course of 15 to 30 minutes. So decent clip to the south and east of Madison. Not expecting that sort of shower and thunderstorm activity the rest of this evening across southern Wisconsin. Maybe one lone shower popping up here overnight, but the persistent activity should stay to the south towards the Wisconsin-Illinois border. Where conditions have broken into a little bit more in the way of sunshine, Camp Douglas up towards Watoma, temperatures in the low to mid-70s up further up on the highway up there by Black River Falls, where we've had more in the way of clouds and those showers today. Temperatures in the middle to upper 60s across the rest of southern Wisconsin. Rainfall amounts sparse. Again, if you're south and east towards Janesville, you might be lucky to pick up a quarter to half inch, but the rest of southern Wisconsin not expecting much in the way of rainfall with this particular weather event, which we've been mentioning for the past couple of days. As we move forward through the rest of the night, an isolated pop-up shower, maybe a clap of thunder, but not expecting widespread activity. We'll be in the 40s overnight. If we can get the skies to clear on Tuesday, we'll get into the mid-60s. We'll go for 65 in Madison, a little warmer to the northwest where there's a better chance of sunshine and strong northeast winds as well. So be kind of a breezy, a little bit cooler of a day. And those temperatures getting right down to about 40 as we go into the beginning of your Wednesday morning. Would not be shocked to see a little bit of patchy frost in some of those susceptible areas. I'm going to step out of the way here. As you note here, our temperatures climbing from Tuesday at 65 back into the 70s. Look at Saturday and Sunday, 81 and Saturday, 83 on Sunday. It's going to be a warm weekend ahead with some shower and thunderstorm chances Thursday and Friday. And then again, Sunday going on into your Monday. Alex, thank you. You know, this spring has brought so many storms and wild weather. The Storm Prediction Center confirmed at least 200 tornadoes over more than two straight weeks. And these storms are a reminder to prepare for a potential disaster by making sure you are financially protected. Shannon Martin of Bankrate says you can get your physical house in order as well. Get your roof inspected, test your garage doors, seal any gaps, and think about how to cover windows before the storm hits. Weather is changing. So even if you've never experienced a disaster before, you need to do some research on your area and see how likely you are to experience a disaster in the next few years. And in some states, insurers are pulling out of the more disaster prone markets, leaving homeowners with fewer options, often at even higher costs. And still to come in sports, Steve Stricker's dominance on the senior tour last year got him into this year's PGA Championship. But today he announced he won't be playing in this weekend's major. Why? Next on News 3 Now at 6. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. My name is Adrienne and I was hurt in a car accident. What Gruber Law Office has done for me was made me feel safe. It didn't cost me anything, just one call, that's all. Injured? Call Gruber Law Offices today. One call, that's all. My son, Nick, took illicit fentanyl, which cost him his life. And knowing that my son is never coming back is the worst thing that I will have to live with for the rest of my life. Tammy Baldwin's been with us every step of the way. She just got a major bill passed to really crack down on fentanyl. She doesn't just talk the talk, but she actually walks the walk. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate Tammy Baldwin fighting this fight. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. I was born with a heart defect. For most of my life, it was safe to monitor with regular checkups. When I was ready to start a family, we knew it was time to make my heart strong enough for pregnancy. I was nervous. But my team at UW Health specializes in complex procedures, so they knew how to help my heart keep up with my dreams. They had the expertise I needed when I needed it, and now I'm ready for the next adventure. UW Health. Remarkable. Tina, the Tina Turner Musical. 
see her triumphant story and prepare to be ecstatically blown away direct from Broadway. Playing June 11th through 16th at Overture Center. Tickets at Overture.org. Why choose between that new deck you've been wanting and that vacation you've been dreaming about? Get both. A deck that outlasts wood three to one and up to a seven-day vacation on one of the top cruise lines or at one of our hundreds of resorts with no blackout date restrictions. Call now or visit the website for your new deck today. Get solar and get saving with Olsen Solar Energy in the Madison area. When you're talking to someone and you call someone at Olsen Solar, it's not someone in Utah, it's not someone in California, it is someone local right here. By doing that, you know, we control the entire process. So we control the project management, we control the design, we control the installation, the electric, the hookup, permitting, and, and that really sets us apart. Stop into our location near you. Learn more at OlsenSolarEnergy.com or give us a call. Gruber Law Office. One call, that's all. 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 Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. One call, that's all. Steve Stricker wrapped up a good weekend of golf, finishing third in his first senior major of the calendar year. The Edgerton native was slated to play in this weekend's PGA Championship, but today he withdrew from the event. Strick is in a busy stretch. He was scheduled to play three majors and the AmFam Championship in a five-week span. Stricker talked last week about how he really wanted to play this full slate, but ultimately he bowed out. You know, it's harder to play two weeks in a row at our age, let alone three and then four out of five weeks. So it'll be a busy stretch, but I, you know, I'm just going to have to make sure that I'm rested, ready, but I feel good. I'm excited to go play. I'm excited that they're majors. I'm excited that I get to play the PGA championship in the middle of all this. That's a huge challenge just to try to get in there, make the cut, you know, will be a good thing. So um, excited for all of it. It is that time of year when people are starting to get that itch to fish, but this Saturday the lakes are going to be awfully busy. It's the sixth annual Casting for Kids event put on by former Wisconsin men's hockey coach Marco Sicky. That's where 80 boats hit Madison's lakes trying to bring in the most fish in the day. Now the day ends with a silent auction where last year they raised $155,000 for the Carbone Cancer Center and the American Family Children's Hospital. Hosting this event is no small task, but for Osicki, it's personal. Well, I started out my life in the Children's Hospital, so that, that's where it starts. Uh, I was in St. Paul at the Children's Hospital in St. Paul. You know, in the back of my mind, if I ever had the opportunity to do a fishing tournament, raise awareness, put smiles on faces, and then hopefully we raise funds. Obviously, we're going to want to continue to up the ante and, and, you know, generate more and more funds that we can donate. And Whitewater Baseball punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament this weekend with a WEAC tournament win. But today they found out they're not just in, they're hosting a regional. They'll play Crown College in California Lutheran in Whitewater this weekend. But the Warhawks, they're not alone. Beloit College is in the NCAA D3 tournament too. Here's a look at the Buccaneers' reaction to hearing their name called. And honestly, that's why I love sports. You just can't beat that. That's it's the best time. It's the best. Tournament season upon us. Final check of the forecast with Alex. Yeah, air quality conditions yet this evening. Our Queen Bee Radio Skycam show a bit of that haze near the ground where we do have air quality advisories at least until midnight for Madison. Platteville and points off towards the north and towards the west. The other part of our story is any shower and thunderstorm chance that we can still sneak out of this weather system. Few and far between overnight tonight. And we get a mild week ahead and 80 degree temperatures. By the time we get to next weekend, you so know get I ready like for that. I know weather. you do. That's I good. know you do. I'll take it. Alex, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News Now at 6. Folks, have a great evening. We'll be back here tonight at 10.